Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Alessandro Biffi. I'm an assistant professor of neurology here at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And I'm one of the faculty members at the Erwin and Allison McCann Center for Brain Health. I am the director and founder of the Aging and Brain Health Research Group. Our approach focuses on considering the brain and the patient as a whole, uh, trying to avoid distinctions between neurological and psychiatric disorders. We specifically focus on cerebrovascular disorders of aging, which is to say caused by vascular uh, problems leading to inadequate blood supply to the brain. We currently have a clinic located here at Mass General that provides care to patients with aging-related neurological and psychiatric disorders, as well as a research um, program that tries to identify risk factors for aging-related brain disorders, develop new prevention and treatment strategies, as well as uh, identify new technologies that can help study these disorders and provide care to the patients that suffer from them. One of the new advances that we've been working on is focusing on what are referred to as social determinants of health. Social determinants of health are the social and economic conditions that people grew up in, work in, live in, and are profoundly tied to their risk of developing certain medical disorders, including many of the disorders such as stroke and dementia that we study. And they're also associated with the ability of people to recover from these conditions, to get better, um, or vice versa, they can affect the risk of people to see progression of their symptoms. In particular, recently we have studied how social determinants of health affect the ability of patients to control their blood pressure after a stroke. Blood pressure especially elevated blood pressure, is probably the most potent risk factor for a stroke. And if you are a stroke survivor, is the most potent risk factor for having a second stroke. So controlling blood pressure is really critical for every single stroke survivor. Yet time and time again, we have observed that stroke survivors have a very difficult time controlling their blood pressure, even more so for those that self-identify as Black, Hispanic, or Asian. What we've also noticed is that there are many biological reasons why someone may have persistently high blood pressure, ranging from example from the type of blood pressure disorders they have to how well it was treated but we were also able to identify several social determinants of health. Interestingly enough, one of the strongest predictor of being able to control one blood pressure was the income, not of the individual patients, but of the community they lived in, suggesting that the socioeconomic environment that our patients are part of plays a critical role in determining their ability to make a difference in their brain health after a major stroke. There are many reasons why we are excited about these findings. First and foremost, although it may sound unusual, most of the time when stroke survivors are evaluated and decisions are made on how best to take care of their brain health, what happened to them from a medical standpoint before the stroke is not fully explored, if it is even explored at all. We overwhelmingly focus on what happened after the stroke. And our research is now showing that these trends in the ability of patients to control their elevated blood pressure and likely all the other risk factors that lead to stroke and loss of brain health are lifelong. They are part of a trajectory that is more of a life path than a change that happened after the stroke. And if this insight were to be incorporated in the way we organize care for stroke survivors, it would lead to breakthroughs in the way we can help people take ownership and achieve success in restoring and preserving their brain health. Furthermore, it also is intuitive that a person's social and economic environment, the way the availability of resources and the income of the community they live in impacts their ability to take care of their brain health. 
Yet this information is not currently part of the medical evaluation that a doctor would perform to help a stroke survivors in preserving their brain health. We have now the opportunity to leverage a lot of different tools, including large data sets as well as electronic health records to bring this data to the patient and clinician when they're working together to chart a path towards better brain health. And our data suggests that being successful in achieving this revolution in the way we address risk factor control after a stroke is likely to have a profound impact moving forward. So this is what makes me passionate, is the ability to not be a good clinician and a good doctor, but to also serve as someone who takes the inside obtained from working in the hospital and in the clinic and translating it into advances that can make a difference, not just for my patients, but potentially for millions of patients struggling with problems related to brain health.